Probably don't take my second job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be, I mean. Nah, the booster was the worst yeah. one for me. Yeah. I felt yeah. sick yeah, out of the yeah. booster. I'm not trying to travel, so I haven't had none. <laughs> I, got, I got my you booster next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm not traveling. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. I'm anti jab, so I'm anti flight. I get it. Us, our boxing champion Craig That's Richards in the build. You get me? Thank you for coming, coming through. through. See you shining. Oh, you get me? Yeah. Make sure you got that ah, on, on the camera. Yeah, and that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nah, so what's good, brother? Oh, man, just here. You How know? you doing? Are you looking very clean after the other days, but still, I was yeah. expecting to. No, 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 I'm not here to take damage as a sport. Do damage, don't take damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to do the abuse, not get any abuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's still not big up that. again for the other neck. That was a big yeah. fight. That was a big, big fight. You get when you me? say championship. Yeah. Well yeah. on that yeah. one. Brother was tough in a serious operation. He, he's, he's, his jab's good. Good. He was, he was ranked above every British fighter at British level. Um, obviously, 24 fights. The two he had lost was on split decision was arguable. One of them was a rematch. He got a draw against the guy. Whichever I thought he won in the first place, and that guy was 15 and 0, 12 knockouts. Mm -hmm. So he was meant to fight for a world final eliminator so the week second. before my fight, mm -hmm. and he changed to fight me. So it was a big moment for him to like change his career. Like he was knocking on the door, if he won that, he's pushing on to world titles. So he was on the stage of that. So we knew he was well ranked, we knew he was tough, he's never been hurt, never been stopped, he's never been down. Oh, wow. Um, so we knew he was a serious How many player. fights has he had? 24. Oh, bloody so he had more fights than me, more wins than me. Yeah, yeah. He's never been hurt, never been dropped. He's yeah. got a good knockout. Do, he got do good knockout ratio. Got a good knockout and, ratio as well. Um, I think even one of the guys that, there was a couple guys I watched him in common. I think the one, Anthony Yard and them lot box. I think he knocked him out quicker than them. Not even knocked him out. Some of them knocked okay, him out. So okay, okay. He's, he, yeah, he was serious. Are you in the same player. division as Anthony? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never fought him. Now, you know, we used to train together mm -hmm. a year before I turned pro. I used to meet him, Tunde, we used to train in the same camp. Oh, yeah. so big up Tunde. Yeah, okay. yeah, big up Tunde. We my people and how long still. have you been professional for? Now I've been pro for six years now. Is it? Yeah, yeah no. six years. Same so I've come through in the traditional route, done one my southern area, six, seven fights in against a guy, 12 and 06 knockouts, pushed on. Obviously, won the WBA Continental against obviously one of Eddie's biggest prospects, G, former GB boy, high knockout percentage, Jake Hall, twelve and one. He was um he was world ranked top five in Britain when I boxed him. He was a massive favorite in the bookies. Went out and knocked him out within three. That's how I got my world rankings. Then obviously I pushed on to box for the British title against Pitt, Shakan Pitts from Birmingham, fourteen and zero, unbeaten former English Aye. champion, British See champion. See that one there. Yeah, obviously I got him out Smashed there him as up. well. So. <laughs> yeah, that traditional. I won all my titles the traditional route, and obviously then I just won WBA international title the other day against a well ranked, solid opponent, mm. um, and I got him out there within six rounds. So even the other day, I put up that picture of my trophy cabinet and all my trophy, my titles. Every one of them, I won by a knockout. So I've done it the hard route, and I come through proper. Yeah, no, what's, I hate. What's, I, I what's hate your it. amateur background? Didn't have a big amateur pedigree. All I've done is twenty two fights, um, three years in the game, and got signed. So when you're looking at the guys I'm competing with, I had 22 fights. Even when I boxed Bivol, Bivol had 285 amateur fights, only lost 15, and he won 13 gold medals in world championship games and that from heavy middleweight and light heavyweight. So when you have a split with guys like that, when you've only had 22, but the difference with me, when I jumped in this game, I've dedicated everything to it. So it's like I work hard. Like there's no one who outworks. Mm, me you say, I'm you dedicated. say, you say, you like to be known as you like that underdog feeling. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, explain that to me. I love it. It's like come from the mud up in it. They're not looking at you like that. They just think they don't oh. expect it. Look, when I come in the game, yeah, I never come with no accolades. I didn't know anyone in boxing. So I trained. Obviously, I was in Peckham in the Lynn. Then I moved to Catford, the gym in Catford. When we moved to the gym in Catford, we was in an industrial state. 
like cold industrial state, just grinding in there mm-hmm. to the point we moved to a school hall in Bellingham. Was grinding in there, so and I used to box in these mad shows. Yeah, like you used to box. You used to box at that school. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's how bad it got to. So you used to train with Richard. Man, yeah. Said that, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Richard's my boy. Yeah, yeah, Richard's Richard, my boy. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, mom, my boy. Yeah, my boy. Yeah, yeah. Big up Rich. My Big boy Rich. still. So that's why I was. I've, I've been training from there. So when I come through. When we left the Lynn, I was in a small amateur club. So when I used to be, compete with these big names, I was the underdog from amateur. So what I've done is, if I explain it to you in the simplest form I can, when you come through in the boxing, you get under 10s, under 20s. Then you go like 25 fights in, you go elite plus. You fight the GBs, guys are 100 fights plus. Six, seven fights, I think eight fights in, I changed from the under 10s and I went straight to elites. So I was boxing number ones, GBs, all of that from eight fights in. Okay. From and I had twenty two fights basically all at elite level. So and I was beating guys I shouldn't be beating. People couldn't believe I was taking the fights with certain people and getting them out of there. People were like, oh. So for me, I had the underdog mentality from then. Early. Yeah. So when I come to the game and I knew no one, I met Tunde, Anthony, and that. I went there to spar because I couldn't get sparring in South. So I tried to go over East London with my gym bag, and they was like, "Now nah, we know you. Are. We saw you in the nationals, whatnot." They didn't want to spar me in amateur gyms. They put me over to the pro gyms. That's when I met Tunde. I met Anthony in the championship because we both won the box cup, the gold medal. He won it at cruiser. I won it at light heavyweight. And we both got fighter in the tournament. So I knew him from then. Then, obviously, I sparred around there. Tunde looked at me. They looked at me. They was like, oh, this guy's good. Bro, I want to see him and Anthony spar. Like, everyone hyped it up. We got in this spar. They was like, oh, yeah, he's a good operator. Boom, Tunde said, yeah, I'll join the camp. I was like, cool. Join the camp with Tunde. And that was there for a year. Cut long so short, in the end, I ended up leaving there, got signed with the Sims. Three years after he watched my last amateur bout, went my bear, took me for camp. Two, three weeks, then I come in the office one day, he was like, oh, spoke to Eddie, someone's come off of his show, he's saying you can make your debut on Eddie Hearn's show. And I was like, it's not enough time. Like, two weeks, he said, no, you, like, you're all right. Like, Eddie Hearn said he can make your debut on his show, like, there's, there's nothing to think about. I was like, cool. So I went and done it. Obviously, I was a bit nervous though. Done bare tickets. I remember walking out and then, um, you know, like you sold bare tickets, but you forget people actually coming to you. You sold a ticket to you. You know, you start seeing my aunt he ain't seen for time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, there, I'm, like, but I'm like, raw. I'm like, raw. These people actually come to watch. And these yeah. times you're thinking, oh shit, what am I get? If I lose, mm. you don't know how it is. Your first profile, you don't know how hard it is. Yeah, that's I crazy. went out there. My manager kept me cool. He's like, look, you're a talent. Go out there, enjoy yourself. Don't worry about nothing. You have one day, you go and enjoy it. I said, cool. Jumped in the ring. Boom. 40 something seconds later, knocked the guy out. He was like, see, welcome to the program. I was like, raw. I was like, feeling myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not for this. Who's next? <laughs> yeah, but then, yeah, I went from I there. Hate that. And then, like. Yeah, the, I wanted to talk to you about amateur career, but you ain't got one. <laughs> no, I'm saying I had a small. No one. ABA is nothing. I won the nationals. Then I won the box cut. All well, in 22 was, fights? Yeah. Won that because I was fast tracking. And then and then I come up short, I boxed. My first GB fight, me and Boaxi boxed. My first elite fight, he was the GB number one. I remember coming up short by three points. And I was pissed because I remember like, I won the first round. Then he came into it on the second round. And I've never done nine. And my manager said, my trainer said at the time, all you got to do is get this last round. I thought, so I don't know how this last round is, but you're fit. But this is when I realised it's all in your mind. Like I started slowing down. He said to me after that, can we slow down a bit in the last round? I was thinking about getting tired. So you can't think like that. I said, yeah, I know. And I always thought, oh, I'd love to. In the amateurs, I was like, oh, I'll run that back. Then I know what I'd have to do different. But mm-hmm. obviously it was amateurs, innit? Mm-hmm. But that's what I learned. I learned from then and I just kept banging up all the elite fights, elite fights. And I just progressed fast. And then as I turned pro, professional, obviously promoters, everyone in the boxing game, they don't, they're not here to hear a sob story to hear, oh, but I only have 22, I need more experience. That's your business. Then don't turn pro in it. So I'm in fast track like I was a GB boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, six, yeah. seven fights in, I'm boxing guys 12 and 0, six knockouts, and these men's won ABA championships and all of that in, the, in their amateurs. So they're seasoned amateurs, better amateurs than I was. And now they've got double experience of pro. They nearly got more knockouts than I've got as fights. Mm. And I've got a headline to fight these men for a southern area. And that's how I won my first title. The half fight, got it 10 rounds, got the decision. I was like, boom, start of things. So that was then I fought the Portuguese champion. Um, then I've moved on, obviously, 
was 10 and 0 and I took a fight on five days notice against Buglione when I was a super middleweight I heard someone fell out um, for the British light heavyweight title at the weight above and I was sitting in the bar with Eddie and my manager one two o'clock in the morning he's like oh I'm pissed someone just dropped out um, Callum Johnson he's ended up in hospital for the show next week like oh, if you ever wanted to fill in I won't hold you to if you don't I was like oh. Let me have a think about this. No bed, it's still talking in the morning, but I think about this next week. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. So when you take him on, obviously does the contract still same to stay the same? You just jump in on his contract, same money. Nah, do you negotiate. what happens? I feel like at the time <coughs> I had a bit of bargaining towards the time to negotiate a bit more money because really You was filling you're me making it. Happen. Saving his bacon. Saving yeah, so I got a bit more you know what I'm saying? He was doing me a lot of favours for the show, money wise, etc. So it was like, you know what? I weren't thinking about that at the time when I was to agree or not agree. Mm -hmm. Obviously, after I realised we were going to agree, then obviously we sat down and negotiated the money. Mm -hmm. So I got um, paid good for it. But it weren't really about that because it was about long term, the career I was thinking mm -hmm. about. And I thought I sparred Buglioni before. And I sparred him. I'm like, yeah, I know I can beat him skill wise, but I ain't trained for it. So it was kind of like, is it the fitness that's going to let me down or my skills going to pull me mm -hmm, through? Mm -hmm. It was a mad roll in the mm -hmm, dice. Mm -hmm. So I flew back from, I was in Ireland, flew back from Ireland on Sunday, uh, done two spas Monday and Tuesday, had to go there for Wednesday, the public workout, press on Thursday, weigh in Friday and fight Saturday. So I trained two days, just fight my first 12 rounder against the British champion, weight Fuck above, yeah, no. um, who had more than double my fights. I think he had like 23 fights, 15 knockouts. I was 10 and 0 at the time. Everyone was like, this is a pointless fight. You're going to get knocked out in three rounds of that. I remember talking to Eddie and he was like, listen, if you can't get him out within six rounds, boy, someone's got to throw that towel in. I said, Eddie, I'm not, I'm not built like that. He's like, no, I know you're ambitious, but you've got to be realistic. <laughs> like, Eddie, like, I'm not that guy. No. I'm not getting no towel thrown in. I'm in there, I'm in there, I'm, in there. I'm fighting. He's like, it sounds good, but Craig, like, I know you're a fighter. I'm like, no, I'm serious. So when I boxed him, Although I didn't get him out and done 12 rounds, I come up short on points, never got hurt, never got dropped, nothing. That's when he was like, raw. Like, this guy was the weight below boxing the champion, double his experience, and he's come up Proved short yourself. on points. So mm -hmm. I felt like I half proved myself in a way, but at the same time, I felt like now nah, I've got shit to prove now. And I moved up in weight. And that's when I built into the weight properly. I had three fights coming back with good guys who's winning records. Knocked them all out within three rounds. Got called out by the champion. He tweeted, "Yo, saw you get a good knockout. How about we get on for my title, champ?" I was like, "Cool, let's 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 go." Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we fought. He pulled out. I kept winding him up online. Um, started putting out missing posters saying that if you see this man, hand him in. Flight risk, not mm. dangerous. I started getting pissed, <laughs> bringing him bubble wrap to the way and that just winding him up. So he hated me by the time we fought. Oh, yeah. But went in there. Dropped him first round, dropped him second round, dropped him third round, knocked him out in the third round and took the title. That's mm. when I kind of made my name in the light heavyweight division. Then obviously, then I got called out. St Andre Sterling, he called me out. Yo, let's get on for a final eliminator. At the time, I was meant to fight for the Commonwealth, but I could see he was on my back. So I just said to my manager, cool, let's make the fight then. Took the fight with him, beat him, pushed on. And then obviously, I had the Pitters fight waiting for that in the balance. Obviously, went out there, boxed. Pitters, he was meant to be he's six foot six foot seven, fourteen and oh, meant to be one of the best in Britain. I remember the week before fighting. How tall are you? Six three. Well, you look like you was walking him down. Yeah, because he because of his stance. Yeah. See the way he stands, yeah, he bends yeah, his yeah, knees, yeah, so he yeah, looks shorter. You look like yeah. he was walking he him like down. He looked like a taller though. fighter. Yeah, but he's not. Mm. Yeah, he's four inches head taller than me. Mm. But people don't realize that I'm used to sparring and fighting. You fight tall. Guys, cruiserweights, heavyweights, so. I can walk down cruiserweights and that. So I'm saying, Rob, you're my weight. Something's got to give because I'm tall for the weight. So I'm saying, even if your his body looked double man, the upper body, I'm saying, something must be giving the legs. So I'm thinking, if something's giving the legs and I hit you, it's got to go. Mm. It's got to so go. I said, you know what? I said it to him. That was, a tough, that, was a, that was a good fight, man. That's why you don't that skip legs, day. Ah. Even watching it back, though, they had that fight, like, before there was rounds, they had that fight, like, 50-50. Yeah. I don't understand how. Even in the bookies, he was the favourite. He was the favourite. How? Because of his pedigree. But this is what I'm saying. People always write me off. 
Mm. Do you know what it is though, Craig? You don't look like a fighter. Yeah. You yeah. don't. I'm not gonna lie, you don't. You don't, yeah. Craig. I'm not. When I saw you in you real life, first you time don't. I saw you in real life, I was like, Whoa. I reckon like if a man see you out and he wanted to feel like he could take the piss out of someone, he might approach you, Craig. He'd approach the wrong guy. Hundred <laughs> percent, but he's gonna know that guy. after, but that is a look you have. Yeah. You look like you no, just not look, that you not that. No, no, not Craig, that you just approach, don't look but you like, don't look hard. Yeah. You don't look like the uh, boxer out like, of the crew. Yeah. Do you, you know understand I mean? me? Yeah. You look like you get a lot of girls. You sound like that. <laughs> yeah, you just don't look like that guy, bro. I've just got to be honest, isn't it? You know what? Mm -hmm. That's funny you say that. Have you ever been, okay, have you ever been mis misperceived like a man's... When I was on the road, I think people would the same thing. Okay. So I feel like certain times people would think maybe this is you know what the ends is like think maybe mm. i earn my straps off my mind yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe i could yeah, yeah. but that's why i used to i think people learnt the hard way mm. and i thought like that sounds painful ended up getting out of there all the time or end up having madness with it <laughs> always went left for them yeah and they'd think because i'm i'm stubborn like once you irritate me I'm clearing my schedule for you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So once I clear my schedule for you, I'm not doing it for the next few weeks. That sounds official. So, yeah, that, that sounds very yeah, formal. Yeah. I remember being with a batch of man, and I made sure I got every single guy before I continued doing anything. So I think like I'm very stubborn, and I'm someone once I'm irritated. That I'm See, that's the lion in you, isn't it? Yeah. So I think like that's where I take it into my boxing. It mm -hmm. reminds me when I've mapped this on road, I'm like, oh, you think I'm the victim? Yes, You're gonna learn brother. Yes, brother. So that's why if you notice all my grudge matches, I knocked them out. And they always get punished. Well, Peter's a... Uh, he was a grudge match. He was a grudge yeah, He was Craig talking cool. smack, <laughs> yeah. Then they start talking mad. Oh, Craig is all right. He's always done well to get where he is, but he's not on my level. <laughs> not on your level. Yeah. So then like, obviously... Right hand for Richard. First, when I was talking to him, I was getting irritated in interviews, and then, like, I was like, Do you know what? Forget that. We've signed the fight now. Now it's enjoyable time because now I'm going to get him in the ring. And when I get him in the ring, I'm going to punish him. Ain't none of them wanted no rematches. Look, when you get a man out of there, the way you get them out of there, they don't want to do it again. In Depends. their head and to their fan base, they're going to say, Yeah, I want to get him again. But they know no. it's a nightmare. Like when I beat Jake Ball, he moved to the other side of the country, world. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he move to? Do you know what? I think he went to Australia. I knew you were going to say that. You know what it is? I did not know you were going to say that. Man, see me coming through, laughing, smiling, cracking jokes, and they think, Oh, look, at this shoot's not serious. Because you know what it is? I'm comfortable with myself. Yeah. Certain men got to come through, they come with the aura, they're screwing up their face. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Not giving them that. Because they're not comfortable. Them they're hard, soft dogs. Yeah. Me, I can smile and laugh or try me, innit? That's how I, I feel. I, I you try me. You know what, you're capable, what you're capable of. Yeah, you're comfortable with what you're capable of. I rate of. that. Yeah, I love that. Show up. Let me ask you something, though. <clears throat> Would you fight any of them Logan brothers? The money's right, I'll fight anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the money's right, I'll fight anyone. That's real, isn't it? What do you think of them? Because I, I, what do you think? What do you think of what, what's going on? To be on honest, I think it was a joke when they first come. But mm. to be honest, these men are winning, and they're getting men out of there, and they're getting paid. So they're training, they're getting paid, and they're winning their fights. So they're not disgracing themselves, and they're coming through their boxing. 100%. So you can't really mock them. If they was coming through, they was coming through, and then had their first fight, and got banged out. Yeah, you'd be, like, you're be a joke. different. But mm. if you're out there performing, then you're running out your mouth. You and they train them. a lot as well. They actually work they hard. Train. They the work gym. hard. They're working hard. They're training. They so do. What can you say to them? Uh, let me take it back, though. Yeah. Hmm. So you got Craig Richards as a you. What was your first passion for boxing? You know what? Well, growing up, um, when I used to go see my dad and whatnot, he always used to watch boxing. He went into football. So when I was young, I used to always watch boxing, like Sky Sports box office. But to be fair, American boxing, Tyson mm -hmm. and whatnot. I did watch like some British, like Lennox Lewis, Prince Nassim. Like, Reggie Wright. Reggie, R Reggie Wright and Ronald Wright. Yeah, Winky so, Wright and them and yeah, there. So they're the, like... I uh, always, that's why that like, even the way I box certain things and I like, shoulder roll, da, 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 it's because I've always watched American. I know, I saw you doing me with a move. Yeah, yeah. The I've seen you there. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I've seen yeah, you yeah, do some yeah. moves. Hey, you I've got one mean seen uppercut, seen uppercut yeah. <laughs> it's fuckery. I call that fuckery. You throw it from far as well. I don't know how they don't see it. I don't know how they don't see it because I'm looking like he's going to throw it. He's going to throw it. He's got to skip it through. He's got to understand a man's peripheral vision. Yeah. 
although you can see it on TV, you got to see what his eyes can see. Yeah, for real. Depending on where his hands and his I'm seeing it from are. here, innit? So it's easy, yeah, yeah. If a man's seeing, for example, if a man's hands are here, he can't see anything here. So when you're driving in a blind spot, you can't see there. So if someone wants to crash into you there, they can't see that. But if you was watching there, could you see a man back up yeah, across the road to crash into you? Um, 100%. That's how I watch boxing. I understand you. I understand your hand placement. I understand the mistakes you make. I understand your bad habits, your good habits. And that's why I can throw certain shots. Mm. This is why it's chess. I'll set you up for two, three rounds to do something I want to do to you in two, three rounds. Mm. It's a chess game. See, people can play che checkers. They can't play chess. Mm. So they want to get the move straight away. They just want to punch you. They want to punch you. They want to punch you. So it's like they want to keep stealing your fingers, but they're not thinking long term. I'll take my time. I'll be patient. I'll put the pause out. I'll let you think you're eating these guys. Then bang, checkmate. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. So, do you have any boxing influences in your family, mate? None nah, at all. My uncle boxed um, amateur. Okay. My cousin, Daniel, he boxed amateur. I had a cousin from West Ryan, he boxed amateur. My other cousin I used to chill with, we was the same age. We started boxing together, then he stopped. I carried on. To be fair, I followed him down the boxing gym. We was 14. Me and him used to do a lot of things together in the summer. Um, his mum said to him, we was going to take him boxing. My own didn't really want me to box. And I said, oh, well, he's going and we do everything together. So mm -hmm. I followed him down. Obviously, he then stopped. I carried on. I used to do it as a hobby. Then boxed there for a year and a half. Then my cousin Daniel, he boxed at Lynn. He was like, yo, come down and do some sparring down here. So I went down there just to do sparring, having fun. Down him was the coaches used to gas me up about competing. I'm telling you, my man, you'll be a champion. You got signed in yet, blah. Why is this guy But they weren't lying, though. They fucking saw it. Yeah, he saw it, but I didn't see it because mm -hmm. at the time I didn't bout. And all these guys in the gym, they're like 50 bout elites fighters. So I'm thinking, Rob, why would I be a champion when you got bare man in who's bouted and mm -hmm. doing well? Do you get what I'm saying? But obviously, they've probably seen a million people walk in the gym. They know what they're looking for. But at the time, obviously, I'm young. I don't know what they're looking for. I'm just thinking, he's gassing me up. So I'm thinking, what's he gassing me up for? Is he my subs or what? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Subs. Yeah, I'm paro, isn't it? Like, oh, obviously, you know, you're young, you're a teenager, yeah. everything, you're paranoid about everything. <laughs> like, you know? So I'm like, obviously. but he's like, yo, listen, if you come, I won't, I won't charge you subs, you can bring a friend for free and I'll drop you home. And obviously, back then, coming from Peckham to Ends, you kind of need that lift home in the night when you go to the park, you're like, yeah, I can do that lift home. So. Yeah, so I kept, I kept going and then he left the gym. So when he left, I left. I stopped and obviously I was out and about doing what I was doing, doing my thing. And then I remember I got to an age, I got to like 20, 21. I was like, oh, I need to do something proper with myself. I was like, I started going back to boxing. And I was kind of watching people that I used to train with doing well. And I was like, I was better than him. I was better than him. So I looked at it and I said, what's the difference between me and him? He's been consistent and I ain't. So it's not about talent, it's about consistency. So I always said, if I go back to boxing, I'm going to work hard and be disciplined. So I said, Ra, I'm going to give it three years, amateur, and see where I am at the end of the three years. And I've done that, achieved a lot in the three years, 22 fights. Then signed over to The Sims and then was on match and boxing three years in from then and six years on from there. Mad yeah, champion. Yeah, yeah, that is crazy. So, it's quick, you know. You never know what you're doing. That's a nice turnover. What you know? it is, I'll be honest, like the dedication I've had to the sport has been different to other people's. Like, obviously, I stopped drinking when I started taking boxing serious. I stopped drinking, stopped going out, I stopped everything. I just had my head down, training, working hard, like daily, two, three times a day, six days a week, some days rest, and back on it. Been doing that for years. Um, there's no distractions for me like you can't ring me and draw me out my friends can't say yo I've got a mad motive today or mad drink up or this. I'm not coming now, I'll tell you I'm not coming and they say to me how oh, do you say so disciplined because I know what I'm trying to achieve do you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. I know where I, I could have been going and I look like I look at some of my friends I was chilling with and I look at where they are like do you know what I'm saying and I'm looking like they might have mad time they're doing and I'm looking at what I'm doing and I'm like raw like I've picked a good that's this is where I need to be you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm blessed to be in a position I'm at so I need to keep the ball on I need to keep down this path I need to keep working hard and at the end of this goal it'll be worth it do you get what I'm saying and mm. the thing is what people always say to me people starting up now say to me like how do you say discipline because if I do this um is there any guarantee at the end? Like, I'm saying, bro, you don't start this for a guarantee. 
Like, there's no guarantee in boxing. Mm, mm. You can work hard every day and not get no opportunity. Still get knocked That's out. That's the gamble of it. Do you get what I'm saying? This is why everyone don't want to do it because they think, you know, like certain jobs, they say, you work this position for a year, we'll promote you, then so on. There's none of that in boxing. So it's just like, you're just working hard with your fingers crossed. Mm. And it's a lot of, to do to be doing that with <laughs> no end guarantee. guarantee. Do you get what I'm saying? And yeah, that's the sacrifice I've made and I think that's why I'm here today because I just... Three losses, nobody wants you. Yeah, two. Yeah, two. two losses, nobody wants yeah. you, innit? Yeah, it's a mad sport. It's school. crazy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, three, yeah, three, yeah, three, yeah, three, yeah, out. Three losses, yeah, you're out. Yeah, yeah, you, three, you, 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 no, what, no. what, what, what fight yeah. are you getting on? What, what, what card are you getting on? Can you lose the rest Not of these? Huh? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. Sometimes you're wrong with the Greeks. You see him, you see, yeah, but yeah. you see Chizora. You see him, his character. Yeah. That's all his yeah. thing is, you know. People fully support and read his character seats. for car. He brother. Said, yeah. He sells seats. He's he good for your show because he, he sells seats. He's just losing, and then see, as soon as he loses, he'll be booking his next show that what? night. <laughs> you see, the thing is, with nowadays, in this day and age, nothing's about, like, sometimes it's about, right, this guy's got talent, or this person's talking sense. It's not about that anymore. It's about numbers. Who brings in views? And yep. It's the same thing Who's going to fill seats? It's the same thing. If you're not doing numbers, if you're not making them money, it's irrelevant. See, if I'm talented, yeah, and I'm skillful as fighter in the world, and no one wants to watch me, and this guy loses every week, and bare people come because they like him, he's going to get put on the shows over me. 100%. Do you get what Facts. I'm saying? It's the world. Cash business. rules, business. Definitely. Business never personal. Yeah. So that's another gamble. That's why I say you could be talented, that's still no guarantee. If no one wants to support you or watch you, you're out. Mm, definitely. It's mad, isn't it? Mad. Definitely. So much factors will come into it. It's and crazy. that's why Jazora, you lose and you throw a table and you're back in. Where's the team? He's a G. Ah! He's, he's, a, a, he's a showman. G, he's yeah, a showman. he's a showman. He's a showman. He, and he's and he's very good at it. Yeah, he's very. He's, he's got another fight. He's got another fight next month, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. In December. Headlining. Manchester Arena. <laughs> How do you headline off of that many losses? <laughs> it's crazy. How do you headline it's off of that many I losses? Sit, I need to sit down and chat. <laughs> 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 no, he's the most he's the most intelligent boxer ever. No, nah, he's fucking he's smart, be. brother. Brother, he's got to be. Because we remember what we just said, you know, we sat here and said, three losses, you're done. Mm. Yeah. Three losses, headline. It's, yeah. it's yeah. the complete yeah, opposite of what we just said. 11 head losses. Yeah, job. no, but I'm saying he's yeah. a, a, and he had three in a row. Yeah, yeah, he's probably a fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. There yeah. you go. And he's still and that there. night. He's booking his next fight day, and, and he's still and getting he's a going, good purse. And he's going for someone, and big. he's getting a good purse as well. He's not yeah, getting yeah, no yeah, dickhead yeah, purse. Definitely. Well, you've come off a loss. Yeah, so no, down. he's demanding. There is, yeah, yeah. That's what it is, isn't it? He's demanding his character, yeah. brother. Yeah, his character is yeah. big. Yeah. That is yeah, mad, yeah, really, man. You have to in boxing, though, man. Yeah, you do. You got to, man. Well, that's what I realize. Sometimes you don't talk up. You go unnoticed, and it's like. For ages, I felt like my CV was solid. And I looked at the other light heavyweights. And people was talking a lot about the other light heavyweights. Who was talking a lot. And I was like, I'm just going to let my work do the talking. And I never really spoke much. Um, and then I got comfortable in the game. And I noticed, like, when I started talking up now, where I like, look at my CV. Clearly, I'm the best in the UK. What not? I noticed at the moment I started talking up, I noticed other people started saying, you know what? Now we're looking at it. My man is the best in the UK. But it took for me to say and talk up for myself for people to get mm. closed mm. mouths mm. don't get fed. Definitely. Closed mouths don't get fed, man. Definitely. Normal stuff, bro. Yeah, that's mad. So who was your favourite boxer growing up? In the later years, Floyd. In the yeah. early years, Tyson? In the early years, just before that, Roy Jones. Before yep. that, I would say like Lennox Lewis. You're skillful, man, isn't it? Love you love skill, but you love skillful boxers. Like, of course, if you can use skills, then knock a man out. That's my yeah. favorite. So what I like, there's boxers, there's fighters, but there's boxer fighters. So in this day and age, if I give you an example, like Terence Crawford, he's a boxer fighter. Mm -hmm. So he'll box your head off all night, and then when the opportunity comes, he they will fuck you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canelo's a boxer. He's a boxer. He's a boxer fighter. He Ish. No, 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 he's a he's, he's he, I, you know, he's got skills, yeah, That's but I right. don't know if he's. He ain't got. He, I don't know what it is he's with a him. Fan. Yeah, you know what it is because he's got very skills. He'll shoulder or counter. Yep, hundred percent. He'll draw you in. See yep, he's got head stand. movement. He's, he's, stand yeah, because he's like what I said. He's a chess player, so he'll set you up. He'll do something for three rounds, knowing he's going to switch his attack and a fourth, and you're going to get comfortable. So if I watch when he boxed some guy Leo Smith, Leo Smith was aggressive. There was meat and fire with fire. He said, "This is long." He drew him in. 
went on the ropes, let him throw, and when the opening come, ripped him for the body as he thought he was on the attack. He drew him in to get him comfortable. See, that's what I'm talking about, chess moves. He made, he gave him a full sense of security. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he's a the fight, because he's thinking, he's not yeah. standing there, putting his hands yeah. high, walking you down on me and you. Uh, what's Wilder? He's a one punch artist, man. He's just a one. He just got the one. Why would you ask such a thing? No, nah, because I want to know. You're gonna ask a professional boxer what's wilder? What's nah, gonna... I had to ask you, bro, <laughs> because I know he's none of the two. Nah, Do you get what I'm trying to say? So I'm saying, what category does he? He's an anomaly. He's an anomaly. He's in the wilder category. He's an anomaly. He carries so much power in his yeah. hand that he's yeah. gonna. He can get through so much because he's not a he's good fighter. Nah. A lot of power. He, no, but That's then saying that though, the last fight he had with Fury, he boxed, he well. boxed well. He yeah. bo- he 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 uh, done my expectations. I tell you something when it comes to boxing, you can be your own worst enemy when you're knocking people out because you start believing your own hype. And the problem is when you do that. Like for example, when I boxed Sterling, at the time I moved up to light heavyweight. I knocked everyone out within three rounds. Mm. When he's talking to me, I'm like, bro, I'm just gonna knock you out within three rounds. Like, mm. I just believe my hype. I'm saying, what I do. <laughs> and you was genuine. genuine. You were being genuine. Like, I'm just going to knock you out in three like, rounds, bruv. Like, like, see what's going on here. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to get knocked out in three rounds. Yeah, everyone so else has. Before you You'll know, see what I do. I'm not even bo- But when I'm knocking everyone else out, I was boxing and then the, setting the opportunities up. But now I'm just like, I don't need to box. I'm I just, just knock a man out. Once I hit him, go. he's gone. Yeah. So I'm there sitting there loading up for 12 rounds, waiting for this, well, for six till I dropped him. But... If I boxed, I would have knocked him out from early. But where I'm just expecting it, yeah, yeah. I'm just loading up. And then I'll end up being my own. I started believing my own punch power for a second, believing the hype. And that's why the other day when I boxed, I know I can punch. But I said to myself, remember what got you to this level, box. And that's why for five rounds, I boxed, box, 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 until I saw the opportunity, set him up with the uppercut, then got him out of there. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So I had to remember yeah, my discipline. Yeah. Yeah. So you just never get, you can be, and that's what happened with Wilder. He started knocking everything out. So when he boxed Fury, he was like, I'm just going to knock him out. And you can see in the first fight, he was just running after him with the right hand, waiting for it to land. Waiting like for it to hammer. land. Yeah. Like but a hammer. Like, he wasn't thinking, right, let like me box a hammer. hammer. But when you saw him like knocking everyone else out, uh, he was... Is, it? Okay, cool, cool, cool. When he's knocking everyone else out, he was jabbing, 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 <laughs> still burning that. Yep, 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 yep. But with Fury, he stopped just... doing that. The Vern's a tough cookie. Yeah, but you see, he boxed until Stavern's a tough cookie uh, Stavern is a tough fucking yeah. cookie isn't it that's what I'm saying but you see what I'm but saying he's he not knew. a good boxer he knew he took all these guys serious and he boxed he set them up behind the jab until they walked in all tees jab 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 <sighs> when he saw the opportunity bam I'm so right hurt out. when he beat Ortiz mm, and Ortiz, Ortiz had bad boy boxer so hurt he said, but when he said so Fury he was like this brother's coming off drugs <laughs> yeah. I'm knocking everything out. Yeah. How's he going to last? So I'm going to get him the one hit quit off. And he's chasing him with it. And in second fight, he said, I need to operate properly. I'm going to close the ring down. I'm going to trap him. Then I'm going to knock him out. My man caught him like an alligator out of the water. You're walking towards the river and the man just charged you. You, you. you fell over, you know what I'm saying? Caught him by surprise, fell over. And from then, he couldn't recover. And Fury caught him off guard. So now he thought, okay, cool. Now I need to box. In the third fight, he made the assert of adjustments. Yeah, yeah he definitely. Did. He, definitely did. he boxed well, but someone has to win, someone has to lose. Yeah, definitely. Fury didn't fight his best fight. No, but do you know what? Wilder made it hard for him. Hundred percent, he, he did. It wasn't. It wasn't expected. Forward. No one weren't expecting that. Yeah. No one. Not he even Fury. About all the surprises already. Mm-hmm. So now he was set up for everything. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. what do you think the future holds for him? I think he's got a bright future with that last performance. The second performance, there was nothing going on for Who him. Who does he fight? Who, who's going to fight him? Who's Ruiz. going to take the risk? Ruiz. He needs a comeback. I feel Ruiz beats him, though. He could. But that's yeah. why it's interesting. Because look, you yeah, that that's definitely. That will beat I him. feel Ruiz beats so him. Definitely. And that'll be a bad boy fight. Because you see why? No, the reason. Yeah, that's a you know bad why I say that? Fight. You know why I say that, though? Because. That's Ruiz is a player. close range fighter, isn't it? Yeah. So he's got to stay close to him. And if Ruiz gets close, he wins. Yeah, but if he on the way in. Yeah, on the way in, of course. Him, but I feel like hundred percent with that one too. Yeah. See. <laughs> I don't know. Hammer, hammer. Yeah, so you ask yourself. I don't know. Will he get in on time before he gets hit with a one hit quitter, or will 
Ruiz I think he lands. I up. think Ruiz lands on Wilder before Wilder lands. Uh, on do you him. think Joshua still stands at the same position that he was bef- the other day? Can't. Nah, he won't stand at the same position. Now he doesn't, does he? Because the thing is, he was running it by head and shoulders. But now with Fury putting in such a good performance, becoming world champion, beating Wilder three times, and him coming off a loss, that shakes up the whole thing. It shakes it up fully. So I feel like he has to come. You remember the big win. thing before was Wilder Joshua. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's no ago, longer a thing. It was no Wilder longer Joshua. a thing. People talking about you sick Fury. Do you get what I'm trying to say, bad man? <laughs> hey, so I'm feel, to, I, I'm I feel, feel, I'm very feel. <laughs> 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 Man, nah, it's fucking nuts. <laughs> hey. That got shaken up in a year. Up. Yeah, but that's sports for See, you, man. boxing. Fickle. Boxing is like snakes and ladders. 100%. You take one good win, you take one loss, no one wants to know you. Snake me right to the bottom. You can be the hottest on Monday, hottest boy. Prospect. See that Saturday hey, after you know that fight? See, see that Saturday. Too, brother. See Jeff Lacey. Yeah. yeah. See that fight there? Uh-huh. But that nearly balled for him. <laughs> like the beating he got was that me watching my little brother get him beaten as a you. It was horrible to see. Yeah. What my man done to him. What, who was my man's name? Um, Joe Kazaki. Yeah, Joe Kazaki. Yeah, messed him up, bro. It's so mad, you know, because I don't think he's a good fighter, but he was. Who? Kazaki. He, do you know what it is? He, was he a good, seemed like he uh, fits he's... everyone, but he don't look good. He won't look because he doesn't look pleasing in the eye. Every time he fights, he he's going to... Yeah. But I always thought he was a slapper. He, was, he, he is. He always looked like a slapper. And then you think, Got some hard slaps, didn't he? Off of him, so he must be slapping. <laughs> He's <like> hard. <laughs> hard. <laughs> and he was slapping some edge hard. man and busting yeah. out their face. Blood. That's what I'm saying. So he he fucked Lacey up that night. Yeah. He finished like, I'm beating mm-hmm. 40 and I was Blood, he, 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 he finished Eubanks reign. He yeah, he's an like underestimated. He, he, he didn't. Ray Jones Jr. Yep, he didn't. Eubanks. Bernard Hopkins. Le- Bernard Hopkins. Lacey. Yep, he, th- he fought good fighters. He Love fought good fighters, bro. And he was unbeaten. And, and do you see, even when on the walk down to the thing, the start of the fight, I'll never forget it. Lacey was moving like he was a bad one. My man just had his headphones in and he was just like, just getting his hands wrapped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lacey was a bad boy, though. And you know what it is with Kawasaki? People don't mention him that much when you talk about the greats. No, they don't. So that's because he wasn't a talker. See, like, when you look at Eubanks, for example... He was a talker, so he's known as a legend. People don't really mention guys like Steve Collins who beat him. And yep, then. yep, yep. That was quiet. Quiet. And you were saying that before. Yeah. So only when you talk up in the sport, they start recognising more God. Yeah. So nah, Steve like, Collins is a bad boy, though. He's bad re- boy. He fixed both bad of them. Boy. Be and fixed. Oh, Steve and Collins was a madness when he came. You see, when he came, when he came, yeah, because you have to remember... At the point when when everyone came, them t- Nigel Ben and Chris Bank yeah, were the dominant. Yeah, they they were the dominant it. forces in yeah. that whole in that whole division. Yeah. They were the whole team. Yeah. Who fought in first, Chris? Yeah, Chris. Chris fought in first, and everyone expected Chris to win. Yeah, there was no it's like Irish boy. Yeah, he's a bit loud. He's a bit he's a bit hard, but yeah, Chris is gonna It'll do be it. A tough fight, but not Brother, my man is a warrior. Yeah. Because Chris was a bad boy. Mm, 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 Chris mm. weren't no Mickey Mouse. No, 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 no. Chris weren't no Mickey Mouse. What you think? Yeah. What you think of Junior, Chris? You know what, he's, he's, he's all right, he's good. He's strong and he's fit. Um, obviously, he struggles with boxers, isn't it? Um, Ray Jones is training him now, though, yeah, isn't it? So he Jones struggles with him. boxing. Yeah, Man said boxing. Yeah, <laughs> he does, does yeah. Man said boxing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just got the You're weirdest so disrespectful. career yeah. in the You're world. You're so disrespectful. When I turned my telly on the other day, so I'm playing poker, I was like, fuck it, what's going on? He's just yeah. got a weird, he hit me. Mm. You know what it is, see boxing you got to learn to be versatile because you see a lot of fighters, they do well against a certain style. So, like, if you come forward to him and you want to meet him in the middle, he'll let his hands go all night, he's fit, and he'll keep punching. See, if you box, start moving and creating angles with him, he'll struggle. And that's why in the gym, you've got to learn constantly to be adaptable to everything. A man coming forward, walking you down. A long-range guy trying to walk on his back, you've got to know how to close it and shut the ring down. A man who wants to trade, you've got to be able to trade on the inside, you've got to be able to box long. So when I go to the gym every week, I'm learning something every week because there's always something to perfect. So I'll bring in a guy who's short, stocky, head draw, good punch, good knockout ratio to spar. I want him to close me down. I'll sit and trade and work on him on the inside. I'll bring a long box at all and I'll outbox him and I'll learn each aspect. Do mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? And fighters try to stay in their comfort zone. They'll know they're good with that style so they'll fight that mm, style. Definitely. But I've never done that and I think that's where I learn every aspect. So when I'm moving through the rankings now, this is how I'm able to dispatch on different styles. If we look at the guys I've boxed in title fights, 
that Polish guy, very strong, come forward constantly, all night long. Jake Ball, Southpaw, big puncher, awkward. Mm. Back foot boxer, dispatch him. Chicane, all orthodox, six foot seven, tall, long ranging mm. boxer, dispatch mm. him. Three different titles, three different styles. And yet I've adapted to all and got the KO. Mm-hmm. That's because I'm working around the whole board. Definitely. People try to stay in their comfort zone. Yeah, you're pro- yeah but that's proper home in your craft, dude. But Let me ask you a question. It. Do you see any other boxers' styles in your own? Have you created your own style or, or have you created a style from taking bits from people? Taking bits from loads of people, just probably studying the game. Like I'm one of them guys, like, I'll be honest, if I like to, I steal it. So like <laughs> bro, that's I real. Can, it could be a prospect I watch. I love man, yeah. Does, and I'm like, <laughs> no, but if I see something I like, I'm adding it into my arsenal. Yeah, like, I rate that. I don't care. Like, I'll say to him, man, oh, yeah, I like that. Boom, I'm going home to study that. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, because I'm always learning. To be I'm here to, I'm, what are you going to do? I'm make your pride that. not make you become better? That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not using that because I saw him. Yeah. Like, Bro, I'm using that. <laughs> And I want him to knock out in the next fight. I'm doing it. 100%. It works. It works. Are you paying, it? It works. Are you paying that man homage though after you after you nah, use it. And you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're the dead man. You're the dead man. <laughs> I stole it. So it's right. mine. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, I ask you a question. Yeah. So when you're in training camp, what's a typical Saturday in training camp? On Saturday, I'll get up probably like a six mile run or something, or hour run, and then. I'll go to central London, strength and conditioning. Then I leave there. Then I go physio. And then I go home. And then what's a typical Saturday when you're not in training camp? Uh, maybe just do a run. Just chill. So you're not a party man or nothing. No, you're not in no, tape. No. You're not in no, tape. No, no, you're not in tape. That, you're not in tape. Is that wrong, man? You're, not, you're not in tape with all the gal. No, 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 I'm trying to stay away from you. Yeah, babe, take this bottle. <laughs> yeah, come on, babe. You know who I am. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> no tape, no bottles. So you say, yeah, are you an indoor? Are you an indoor? Are you an indoor chill man? Are you a Netflix and chill type? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to be indoors. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not into the busyness on the outs. I like to be indoors. You see what it is? See, you gotta work hard, innit? So, like, when I'm out of camp, I like to rest my body. I like to just chill out, eat good food. See, Chew food's my family. thing. Okay. I like to, yeah, I'll catch up with the family. I like seeing my yeah. family, catch up with my mum. Where, your, where are your family from? Jamaica. Okay. Both, so I thought you was Nigerian? No, no, no. I did. I'm Jamaica. I'm, Jamaica. I'm both. Yeah, yeah I don't know why. I, I can that's see the Jamaican African. in you. He African. can. I don't know what he can't see. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> <that>. this is <laughs> He's offended. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. We're all African, brother. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? What's the fu- what's what's future plans for you? Now, for me, he's your got, next opponent. I've got a bit of world level. We'll sit down with Eddie in the next couple of weeks and see what he's saying. But I want to stay at that world level now. I've accomplished. I'm not a British champion. I've done everything in Britain. It's pushed on. Done everything internationally. Now it's the only world honest for me. I've Everybody wants you to fight. So, who would you like to fight? Yeah. Oh. Everybody wants you to fight. Yeah. Is that going to. What's the point? It's pointless. The thing is, there with me and him, I got nothing to offer him. He's got nothing to offer me. Like, at this point in our career, in terms of titles or stature, so we just box for the fans. We've got nothing to give each other. I'm saying it's one of them fights that he's knocking on the door at world level. I'm at world level as well. One of us are gonna we're, we're gonna pick up titles at, at the top. Now, if we pick up titles at the top, it starts making sense. Because world championship fight, two of us from the end. British. Send British. Out the O2 yep. Arena. Hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's the yeah, yeah. that's so the goal. Keep isn't it? your own journeys and then journey. buck at the top. I'm not looking at him. He's probably not looking at me. It's a situation like when I hit the British, he had the British. He moved on and pushed on. I won the British. Then I pushed on. I feel like them clashes could have happened at British, but yet again, we're both serious operators. I think, and I think we both potentially have a lot bigger to offer the game than British level. Mm-hmm. So I think like. We keep doing what we're doing. We clear up at the top. I think that clash, everyone will be interested. And I think no, hundred, like, especially once you. Yeah, that will be that will be a pay per view. Other places, yeah. then that'll come be a back big pay per view. Yeah, I that. think the thing with men sometimes, or guys, they look at each other and they don't like someone else doing well in their division or from their area. But I would like everyone to do well. So he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. When tell me me. Buck at the big top. Money, yeah, yeah. Good, good title. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Have you got anyone in your vision internationally? 
that you wanna that you got your eyes set on? I'd like to run it back obviously with Biffle. Joe Smith Jr., WBO world champion. I'd love to run it with him. Okay. Um there's a guy called Dominic Bozil, IBO world champion. He had WBA interim. I'd run it Are you man airing this? Yeah. Um, Don't run from the fight, innit? Come on. My boy's gonna fix your chin. Come on. <laughs> you understand? Minimum bow the league. Minimum. Come on, come so on. So they're the four names. I'm looking at I'm looking at next and you're comfortable taking any one of them Anything. any order. you don't shy from no fights no no no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, geez, I don't mind fight. you don't shy from none I know, I know from you stepped up to a five day fight you're not front yeah I respect that's, it yeah that's well, a madness <laughs> to do, you haven't trained you're not like you've been coasting chilling I love the fighting the fighting gives me that buzz again like I like the yeah. fighting like, you're blessed you do what you enjoy yeah, I love let me ask you a question what's your one. best and your worst moment in your career I was saying my best moment was, I think, beating Jake Ball um, for the WBA Mm -hmm. Um, or the British, to be fair, um, against Shakam. But I think Jake Ball, the reason I'll I'll explain why, when I boxed Jake Ball, we was both signed to Eddie. There were six fighters in my weight. There was too much. Eddie's like, something's got to go. At that point, if I lost the fight, my career was done. So it was a lot, of, and he was the favorite. So oh shit! It was like I was he was fighting for your life. For my career. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people even around me said, "This is too much of an arts." The pundit dude was like, "Remember, he was like the GB boy, represented our country. He boxed internationally, high knockout percentage, was a light heavyweight." And I just moved up. So everyone was like, "He's gonna be too small for the weight. Jake's too big for him. Southpaw could punch." He was the champion. He called me out, thinking, "Yeah, I'll get him out of there." So for me, it was a lot of pressure. And it was my debut in America as well because Eddie just signed to the zone. So mm. our fight was televised in America. Sky Sports co-headlining, O2 Arena, a lot of eyes. 10,000 sold out in the O2 for the fight. Pressure. Big crowd. So a hardest fight to the career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, yeah. sort of pressure on it. But it set you up for some real I shit. I went out there, delivered, dropped him first round, dropped him second round, dropped him third round. I was like, this can't go any better. Stopped him by the third round. Yeah. Statement. Such a big platform. In America, first day being America on TV. Here, Sky Sports, O2 Arena. Best moment. Yeah, boxing yeah, boxing yeah, world yeah, was paying yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah. Paying attention. It's that all the eyes was on to me for that fight. And I went out and delivered. Mm. I think that was the moment I felt good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's tough sick. still. That's tough still. What's the worst moment? Worst moment in my career. Um... I think it was the worst period in my career I went through. Um, I couldn't get out for ages. Weren't getting fights. Um, I finally got a fight. Um, they told me it's the same day way in. I've done it. The guy come in too late. They cancelled my fight. That week I just missed my sister's 30th. Everyone went away with my family and I didn't go for the fight. Then the fight got cancelled. And so I missed the they birthday. Thought, Fuck I missed this. the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is the sh- I've been training yeah, for time. Yeah, 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 fight, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they made me refund everyone tickets. I stand outside the, the show, wait for people to come. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry to laugh. Out there. With tickets. No. It was a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the end, they rung me like, in a week or so, saying, are oh, you still fit to do a four round? Like, we're still trying to get you out. Do you want to go to Ireland? I said, I'll go anyway. <laughs> so I went out to Ireland to fight. Like, I man. knocked the guy out in three rounds. And so, then I was chilling. And then that's why on Sunday he was like, yo, next week there's a 12 round out. You fit? I was like, wow, I was fitting off the screen for a four. But yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 12. Let's go. But that period, I think I just took it. I was just frustrated. I just went to fight in it. I was just like. Weren't getting what you wanted. Getting what, what they weren't getting a breakthrough. At the time, I just beat the Portuguese champion. I just beat the Southern Area champion. Mm. I still weren't getting no justice. No one didn't want to fight. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I weren't it's too, it's, no, because you can be too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, like, you see, I'm not like, talking up. No, listen. Yeah. You see what well, you have to understand. So rewards. People in the boxing knew I was a problem, right. but the boxing world don't know. So they're just saying, no, oh, he don't employ with him because he's no good anyway. But everyone did know I was good in the boxing world, mm. but the public, the general, didn't. It's not worth the risk. For some boxers, he's not worth the risk. Yeah. He can actually beat me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100, 100, 100, 100. He can actually knock me out. I feel like certain people's careers have gone like that. Yeah, come on, man. See, when you're under the the right umbrellas, you'll get shaded from the right rain, you get me? That's (laughs) That's not what it is. The worst thing is, like, in the boxing world, 
the gyms know. When they see me sparring around the gyms, the fighters know, the trainers know, people in a boxing world know, but the public don't because people pump a certain narrative. The guys who are highly promoted is the ones the public cotton on to. So if a promoter like Hearn says, right, this guy's the best. The, the public's public running the with They're it. They're not even looking at stats and facts or the fights. He said he's the best, he's the best. That's it. So guys, if you don't get pumped and you don't get co-signed, you go under the radar. Mm. So and that, could be another, that could be another frustration you have yeah, yeah. in your career. Yeah, that's my story. Hey, hey. Have you picked up any bad injuries? Uh, yeah. Um, my fourth fight was my first step-up fight. Um, I boxed a guy with a weight above. I was 12-4, he was 13 stone. I come in, uh, winning record, full fight. And I remember I was frustrated because I thought it was a test. I thought it was an early test unnecessarily. So I thought I wanted to cause a statement. I remember banging this guy across the ring, knocks him out. But I hit him on his forehead and I chipped my knuckle off. Fuck I can still see uh, the hole in there. there. Ooh. Yeah, I chipped my knuckle off there. And then I remember Eddie then, he was pleased with the performance, didn't know I was injured. Because I never really say when I'm injured. And he went and put me three months later on the Kelbrook versus Golovkin fight card of the O2. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was there with four sponges trying to train with the one hand. All camp. Four sponges and big gloves trying to get through. That fight, I was swollen. I was there trying to get the, the thingy out, four sponges. Oh, and shit. And they put me in another tough fight. They got the O2 in the one Did hand. you win? Yeah, first both is here. So, how many losses have you had? Just two. Just two. Title, What's your mind state after that? I might say burst both his ear drums. Did you feel sorry for him after? Nah, because yeah. he, he thought he was going to beat me. And he uh, was just, yeah, yeah. Well, he gave him that What's one. What's your mind state after a loss? <laughs> um, to be fair, like, luckily for me, like, the first fight, I always knew I was rolling the dice. I took it on five days' notice. Mm -hmm. So when I took the fight, I knew there was always a chance that you might come up short. But obviously, you can win. So... When I did come up short, I was like, disappointed. The mindset was but already there. Like, yeah, yeah. You, there was a reason was behind a, yeah, it. You, it's easy to, yeah, so if you know there's a reason, it's easier to but take. When I went back to the gym, I never used that as an excuse. I said, what did you do wrong in the fight? You wasn't big enough in the weight, growing to the weight. You did that too much. Your ring craft wasn't great there. Your positioning wasn't good. So I still took everything I'd done wrong and practiced it in the gym after that. I never just thought, oh, you took it up five days. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. I still watched it, observed it, and perfected everything I'd done. And that's how I developed. Yeah, that's sick. See, no, that's tough. That's that's the rap. That yeah, but that's you see where it is. Mm. That's a champion's mind. Yeah, frame. definitely. Because you, cause even in defeat, there's there's victory. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? But some people don't think like that. My two losses <clears throat> is where my profile grew in both of them. Because both of the fights that I took, I was meant to get banged out. Like even boxing Bivol, the super world champion, pound for pound, he's noticed. If he's noticed, that's the guy they tell Canelo go and fight Bivol. Mm -hmm. No one wants to fight Bivol. Keep calling no him now, Bivol. No, no one won't fight him. No one won't fight him. And I asked Eddie for the fight. And when we texted him, he said, "What do you want next?" I said, "Dimitri Bivol." He texts back, "Call cool, blimey, mate. Are you sure?" I said, "Yeah, get me Bivol." He said, "Bivol, are you sure about him?" He said, no, I can make that fight. I said, then make the fight. Like, we want that fight. I'm going to watch this one. So he was right, like, this is the way this at this point. He's just getting knocked out. He's a pound for pound. Richards has only won the British. <laughs> like, he's getting ahead of himself. Like This guy's not only a world champion. He's a super world but champion. He's a... So he's beat the other world champions. He beat Joe Smith Jr. Yep. To, out of, he beat four world champions, yeah? Or four world level. Two of them with world champions right now. And between all of them, it won two rounds between them in the whole fights out of four of them. So, me, I came up one round short, 113, 115, and one of them was a draw round, half a round short. So, if so I that won tight? one round in two of the judges' scorecards, I'll be super world champion, champion right now. now. He's made seven defences of his world title, and I nearly took his world title. Yeah, from that's Britain crazy. To think of one round, and that's that's crazy. Screw. 100% mm. everyone paying attention everyone that's when they want that raw you proved us wrong raw you're a world operator we didn't think you were world class you just showed you just got into the best in the world and you come around short and that's not because of and if you see the fight I'm taking my time it wasn't because of what he was doing it's because I was just coasting it you could see I had more gears to go through when I stepped on my gears later he was holding on in the later rounds and trying to see it out 
If I'd done that one round early, I could have possibly stopped him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His own yeah, mind yeah. said, yeah, press down now. 10th, 11th, 12th. I started getting onto him, getting Championship onto him. Rounds. Onto Championship rounds. I came on strong. When I hit him in the fifth, I hurt him. I saw his leg buckle. I didn't expect that I was going to hurt him because he's this super champion. Tam so I you're giving him, him more respect yeah, than you should I have. I caught him on the way out. I'm like, oh shit, it's hurt. I'm trying to jump back on. It's too late. The window of opportunity at that, that level yeah. is mm-hmm. small. Because then man know how to move. They, they're yeah. craftsmen. They, they are craftsmen. So when I'm saying I'm sitting man up waiting for certain things, usually at domestic level, these man, you're not making that mistake. <laughs> yeah. Not thinking. Yeah. So he's he's <laughs> dropping his left hand. He's jabbing from his waist. Boom, boom, boom. When I caught him in the right over the top, man, move his hand from his head till the top again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The adjustment. That's when I realised the world level. When he caught me and he couldn't hurt me, I said, "Right," because people question, "Right, you got a good chin, but how is your chin at world level?" Got caught, couldn't hurt me. When I hit him, how's your power at world level? Hurt the super world champion. You got world class power. How's your fitness at world level? I've been stronger than him. I was the one pressing the fight in the later rounds. That for me answered all the questions I needed to answer. Mm, yeah. So when I come in for my next fight for the championship title fight, that's why I just got onto him and blew him out of there. I knew I can punch. I got that's the good chin. I, I got the energy. Let's go. Sick. So my two losses is what grew my built your team. Built me in terms of my development and my mindset. Yeah, see? That's sick. Hey, who's the hardest hitter that you fought? I would say probably Bivol, but he never caught me clean, clean because I was switched on knowing he could hit. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So you know you're like, you respect him as But did power. you feel his power though? Nah, have you ever saw them hands coming around it? No, no. <laughs> have you ever been licked in the fight and thought, oh shit, what the fuck? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I've come out the ring bare times and people say, wow, oh, that right hand the six magic took us. What took a right hand the six? Then I go home and I watch your team. I'm oh, that shot was serious, but I don't feel punches when I'm in there. So my manager always says, you take advantage of your granite chin, but when you're in the mode, I'm not taking advantage. I'm just, I'm just yeah, you're just in, in the mode. Nothing. Yeah. And then when I look back and as a civilian, when I watch myself, I'm like, oh, I took some serious shots there. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's so, mad. Yeah. Yeah. Cause one time I got punched in my eye and said, blood clot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know when it, hey, you know it started to flash, I said, bro, what happened to me Man, in school? <laughs> your first fight in school, you're punching someone up, you're throwing your hand back up. You see every colour under the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making yeah, sure one time that your eye's not bleeding. Yeah, one time that I got a look that his tail is not blood. <laughs> start tapping your eye like, yo! Yeah, I ain't been licked like that in long still. Yeah, I ain't trying to get licked like that. I ain't been licked like that in long still. Yeah, you two as a fighter, though. Like, it's like when you watch these... Car, like not these, these karate stuff and you see man kicking trees and taking I get shots. Told I'm, I get told I'm too soft in sparring. Serious? Yeah, because I don't, like, when I spar, I, I, they, I, like, I'll pick the shots, but I won't throw it, will I? Yeah. So it's, because I'm sparring the man never whatever, like, I'll pick it, but I won't, yeah. I could fling it, yeah. but I won't. And my coach said to me, like, just throw it. We'll deal with if it's too hard after you throw it. Yeah. Is that how it is? You got to be spiteful. You know in saying? my last couple of weeks, I always like knocking out a few sparring partners in my What's last it few like weeks. knocking so, out? Don't call me know, to spar. It's just like <laughs> my mindset changes. I notice it's repetition. Um, when I go into spars and I'm doing technical stuff, developing on my technical side, which is good early in camp, but when I do that later, I go into the fight, I'm being technical, and it develops my mindset of how I finish sparring. I'm thinking about the slipping. I'm thinking about all the movements I'm doing. When I go in there and start getting them out the last couple of weeks, so when I get in that ring, I just want to get him out. Yeah. So I've got to program my brain to be spiteful. So that's why in boxing, you can't be too, too soft touchy. You got to, it doesn't help them. Mm, definitely. Don't help them, it don't help you. Mm, because definitely. you're not getting proper licks. So when I get in the fight, and my mom's trying to get them out of there, like, right, they're not used to this. And then a the man gets hit and I say, blood Yeah, clock. yeah, he's like, right, that hurts. <laughs> but he should have been feeling that and being a bit of a Yeah, spot. getting used to that, 100%. Definitely. Oh yeah, cool. Next time I spot, I'm licking man down. Lick man down. Man, I'm getting... Don't get licked down. Hey, you licking it? Remember, you know when you don't watch this. When when you don't watch this podcast, yeah. Remember what I said on this, yeah. Next next sparring that I do, whoever's in there with me, I am hitting you hard. Shut when up. I come back on here, I'm gonna tell man that man was sleeping in the corner of the oh. room. Trust the me. Best feeling. It is. I love knocking man out. Yeah, still, I do. Feeling. I do. <laughs> You get paid like, for it. <laughs> no, you get paid for it. You're a professional. Yeah, you don't no. do it like how we do it. You get paid for it, remember? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's different for it's you. Different. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you saying? Um, what was your first purse? Be honest. First purse? Yeah, I'm not going to ask you a new purse. Don't worry. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't 
it wasn't, wasn't mad. No, it wasn't great. You know what it is? When you first start out, you're basically just getting paid to get you through to the next camp. It'll sort your bills out and get you travel money to your next training <laughs> camp. You're not, don't go to no dealership after your first purse. <laughs> that way. You're doing um, better now, though. Yeah, a lot better now. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's that's cool. That. That's cool. Is it even getting dealerships? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming here and pulled up his sleeve. Do you never see what I'm quoting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard shop. 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 It wasn't like that to start. Even my last year, the amateurs, I remember getting in trouble and whatnot. Um, I couldn't really do much in my last year. Um, and I remember I had to go training, pay my subs, pay my thingy, and I've got really ain't got much income coming in now at this point. And I'm not getting paid for boxing. So I'm training. I remember I used to train six days a week, nine till three in East London. Then four of the days I was coming back and training in Catford, seven till ten. So I'm paying to go there, paying the subs, paying the gym, paying my travel, my food. Obviously, your diet for your food has got to be better, in it? So you mm-hmm. can't just be eating, eating moolies. You can't eat proper. So your food gets a bit more expensive as mm-hmm. well. Eating certain things. And it's a struggle because you're just making money to basically go to the gym. But you're not getting paid for boxing. So a year in, you're trying to find ends make ends meet here and there just to train. So that year hits. And then the next year, until you, you sign pro, you're going through your medicals and all that, you've got to pay for your medicals and whatnot. Until you fight, you've made no money again. So mm. looking at a year and a half, two years of grinding with no income really. You know what wow. I'm saying? You're making ends meet. Mm-hmm. And then when you first get your first purse, it kind of just eases you up to make ends meet a bit easier to get to your next purse. So you're looking at your last, first few years, you're not really... You see if you... No, go on, sorry, sorry, go on, yeah, finish, finish. You're, you're there and you've got to remember you're out with man, them, you're, you're bridging, everyone's still doing their thing, so everyone's making money and you're now not doing what you're doing, mm. so you're like falling behind. So now you're pr- you're a man, you're like, right, I want to be making my money, but... You're looking at the bigger picture. So now you're like, like I can fight, but I can't people. buy none. But you're like, right, yeah, everyone's out there with the jewels. I'm not coming out, yeah. but I can't buy no jewels. Everyone's out there with the jewels on. Yeah, yeah big whip, dogs, big drip. Big everyone's dripping that. tables and at yeah, tape. Yeah, these guys, that's what I'm saying. You're there just about to get your car service now. So you're like, right, I've got to step, separate myself. As they say, separate to elevate. And I kind of had to do that for a while. And it was hard. Because I weren't used to that. I was always in the mix doing my thing. Mm. So at this point now, I'm like, oh, this is different. Grinding. Like, this is hard. I've never no, not just having an income at, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 so yeah. It was hard for years. So you're just making money to get by. And you're just sitting there, just make it, hoping this pays off eventually. Um, eventually, yeah, it did not in the end. You start mm. making money and so on and so on. Mm. But there weren't no guarantee of that. So the the... Difficulties in your first year is hard, man. Hard, definitely hard. See, if you lose your first professional fight, are you screwed? Yeah, I think you're done. Yeah, you're done. I think if you lose your first five, you're done. You're done, innit? You're done. Because you're, cause you're, your first fight is basically someone you're meant to you're win. Meant to be. You're, you're a, not... Your first fight will be a journeyman. Yep. So the guy who's turned up, he's come for a payday. He can fight, but he ain't got ambition. If he can get you out, he that gets is you mad. out. That's because you ain't got the ability. So if he gets you out of there, but he ain't got ambition. No, yeah, he the first guy I fought. He had a dead record. I remember, but he kept. I'm not gonna lie. He came out with some weirdness. He just ran at me and started swinging. I was like, bro, ain't you meant to just be here to take me through the rounds? <laughs> As he got done that, I was like, no, nah, you know what? As he swung it. No, I went viral. <laughs> he ran at me, and I was like, "Raw!" And I backed up, and in the end, I was check hooked him like instinctively. I didn't even plan it. Check hooked him, cut his eye. He's clocked his cut. I've clocked his cut. I was smart. Blood has jumped on him and started getting him out of there. I just got him out. Tumping him up, and then he got him out of there in 47 seconds. It all happened so fast, I didn't remember what happened. <laughs> I was like, bro, why did you come at me like that? That's mad. Yeah, it was mad. I thought he was going to come out, have a field around, let me chase let, him. Let, you, yeah. 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 let you get a bit of experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's the no ambition in him. Yeah. Yeah, no, bad. he had ambition. Bro, Are no, you no, mad? No, you no, went to knock him out. Bro, he, won the, he won the championship shot. He retired shot. after that. <laughs> yeah, he must have, that must have been his last role of the yeah, time. That was his role. If I beat this young man. or never. I've got me in a journeyman no more. I'm going to get this guy out of there or I'm done. And I got him out and he retired. After oh, that fight. Yeah. What age are you hoping to retire by? 
Have you set yourself a retirement age? I always said to myself, <clears throat> when I came in, I was 25. I always said 10, 11 years, 35, 36. If I can, if I can have a lot of money in the bank, achieve all the titles I can. Build the legacy. Build the legacy. Then I got time to then live a normal life after yeah. that. And that's why now I don't live a normal life because I would have sacrificed it for after. So that was my plan. But if I go on longer and I don't achieve what I'm, I need to achieve, then I'll go on longer to what I do achieve. Uh, so how do you feel about man like what's his name <laughs> quickly speaking Holyfield and you think that's just bang out of order bro? It allow it. that was in ba- that was horrible it's to watch bang out of order, that was horrible to watch uh, it's it's mad bro that was an old man <laughs> is he still doing it for bread he is isn't he yeah it must have been for bread do you see him yeah he man a mess sad man that was sad money in it man because I watched that guy I'll be honest he's the guy he's the only guy I believe beat Tyson in his prime you see, people say Tyson came out of jail at that point and whatnot. When he came out of jail, he was knocking everything out still and got himself a mandatory position back for his world title or whatever. If you see the performance of Tyson when he boxed Holyfield, one of his best performances, he was throwing combination punches, moving his head, he was getting stuck in. The difference is, my man didn't unravel and started firing back. Tyson's not used to that. Holyfield's got one hell of a chin. Hell of a chin. The Strongest chin I've ever seen in boxing. Right, have you ever mm. seen him and George Foreman box? Yeah, them two went hell to leather. If you saw the punches, anyone else would have went. They were just standing there, just lamping each other's chin, oh, and they're just yeah, trading man. off for twelve rounds. And that's what I realized. This man is a warrior. Yeah. So to watch this warrior go through God, that and to lose to it. that guy, it's embarrassing. It's it horrible was. to watch. Yeah, I'll be honest. It's horrible yeah, it to was. watch. It was. It was. It was. Yeah, but this is it now, they was. Was. The cash rules, bro. Yeah. Mm. Everyone was Everyone do anything for cash, innit? Right, it's Chase the it. bag. Look, <clears throat> back in the day, yeah, it was like morals over money. If you can make your money, great, but you keep your morals. Do you know what I'm saying? Nowadays, you look at the landscape. If a woman is up, but she's on the game, she'll still get ratings. She's got the, she's got the bag. Yeah, though. the bag. It's all, like about, it's all about it's all this new era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's yeah. the you gotta realize there's the saying. You, like you said, yeah. ev- remember what everybody gets up with the first thing on their mind. I'm chasing the bag. Chasing the bag. That's so it. Isn't that what you need to do to get to the bag? We already see that. See, look, if I was on the ends now, and I'm making my money, say I was on the roads making my money, mm-hmm. and then I rob my code If I'm like, no, my man's a wrong man. Yeah. Nowadays, if I rob my code I'm like, yeah, but he's up. It's a good move. It's not like, yeah, but that was your brain. Anything for the bag. There's Looking no morals now. Anything no. for the bag. This is how the road is. There's no morals. This is why you can't play it. It's crazy. This is why you can't be on the road. You can't. Because exactly what you said. In Back in the days, when man was on the roads, there was there was rules. There was morals. Not that everybody played by them, but yeah, the really majority of people played by, them. played by morals. Because you know what's funny, though? I'll be honest with you. Most of the morals, you even learn them from home, you know. It's not even yeah. road morals. Yeah. They're morals that you learn in your yeah. house. But like we always come down to this parenting thing and I don't I don't want to diss nobody about their parenting, but a lot of things that were installed on us, we're yeah. not installing on our kids. They're not. They're not, they're not being passed on. They're not. And this is where the disconnect is. But you is. know what it is? I feel like I see some parents talking to their kids and they don't let their kids be kids. So what it is, they're talking to them about money and making this and da, 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 hustling and stuff too early. You know, they're not letting them go through the development of learning, going to school, learning, growth and then they get to a certain age and it's like where we can have this pick your mm. pick your subjects right because you need to start thinking about your future job there's a development stage mm-hmm. these kids what you're teaching them too early their brain can't comprehend it so their brain goes left when you're talking about certain things they're not putting it into content properly and it goes left 100%. and then they become corrupted mm. so it's like 100%. you've got to know when to develop what into them do you know what makes me sick nowadays when i see babies with instagram accounts oh, it's mad Makes me sick. Because you're a parent thing. Oh, my kid's good looking or he's funny. So if he gets a certain amount of views, he can make money. So it's it what I say me... about money. Do you, know how much, do you know how much pressure? You're not thinking about do you see what that is though? Like, you so see what that is? Crazy. You put your kid under so much pressure from the moment you make that account, mm-hmm. your kid is under pressure for the rest it's of their crazy, life. Yeah. It's cool. It makes should be, me you sick. You should be over 18 to have Insta. I think you should. Makes me sick. 100%. Like so even mad. the ones 12, 13, 14, 15. Putting captions. The like, who writes exactly. the captions for the baby? It's crazy. The, ca- the baby doesn't, the baby didn't think of this caption. Look, I've had friends with kids. Yeah. And 
they've added me on it. Oh, I'll just follow them back. And then, yeah, the other time I'm following because the stuff they put online. Little yeah. girls trying to put a mad reveal. I'm like, yeah, what are you yeah, doing? I'm about to send it to their parents. I beg you, like, to, yeah, like yeah, what they do. This is like, mad. I don't want to see this. Yeah, this is mad. I can't follow them. Yes, I'm like, yes, what, yes, how are you even no, allowed Instagram yes, people man. do this? Yes, but you're bro. seeing other girls on Instagram. You're a young girl and you're seeing your idols, these Nicki Minaj's, whoever, Kylie, whatever, putting up that sort of picture. You want to be like her. I'm you're just, now putting I'm up that You know what's funny? I don't even understand what you're putting up. It's funny that you meant. Did you see made you think today? No. Posted a picture of Nicki Minaj, yeah? Mm. Let me see, where's my phone? There. Oh, there. Right, I'm gonna show you lot this phone, yeah? Tell me if you know that this woman's black. Yeah, let me just ask you lot. You lot just tell me if you know that she's black. Cause, cause I was very offended by it. Cause there's always this big thing about, um, you know, the culture vultures and rare, mm. rare, rare. She's out here calling herself Barbie, yeah? And she doesn't look black. Who is that? That's Nicki Minaj. Mm. Is that mad or is it me? Yes. That, if that's not culture vulturing, if that's not the complete of what, because what, what it is, remember they she get onto girls with braids. With someone, didn't she? Jesse, the and girl from got on the, the girl from Mix, Little Mix, Jesse, and whatever. And everyone got onto her yeah, saying yeah. she was trying to be black, and but then everyone said, why are you getting onto her for trying to be white? Right. This is my thing. The whole internet's been an uproar about this white girls with braids thing. Yeah. Cool. I get it. Yeah, but you've got to be consistent. What about you black girls with blonde consi- wigs? <laughs> you've got to be consistent. Mm. But this is what I'm saying. The, the white girl, listen, wait, the white girl's no, wait, braiding wait. and locks in her own hair. No, wait. Social, the hair that, she was yeah. born she's with. She's not even the same complexion she came in the game with. It's socially bullying people. She's not, mm. she's not even the same complexion. You're socially bullying people and making people feel away because if, you've, if it's a moral thing, no one's getting that No hurt. one's getting on to that. And just stay in your lane. Why are they not getting that hurt? This makes me sick, you know. It's mad stuff. That, she's not even the same complexion that she was when she started rapping. <laughs> not even before your career, then you changed for your career. Yeah. During your career, you're changing. When Gucci Mane was tapping her, <laughs> she didn't look like this. It's, she calls herself it's Barbie. Mad. This is what I'm saying. It's mad, it's mad. <sighs> yeah, it's all mad, isn't it? But yes, no, mad. thank you for coming through, though, My Craig. brother, Craig, yeah. you're a We're going to wrap this one up. You get me, and hopefully, yeah. when's your next fight? Though, tell us when your next fight is. It should be around March. Obviously, I think I'm gonna enjoy the Christmas. Are you gonna and give then... us a ticket to raffle? Yeah, we're gonna take a raffle. Look at this, brother. Right. That was me. I rate that you got him on air still because he can't even pull out now. He said yes. I don't know if I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my fuck. Me and Jamie. That's how it goes. No, it was sick. So what? Wait, wait, wait. What? Nah. You're gonna be fighting world level. Yeah, what devil? Is it gonna be over here? Or? Probably over here. Okay, if it's oh, over, if it's over here, I'm coming. Yeah, got, but yeah, if it's over, over. if it's abroad, I'm not coming because I'm not getting my vaccine and I ain't got a passport. Jump <laughs> <in> the jab <laughs> don't hurt. Like, ah! that's yeah, that's what you're doing, yeah? You're that's pushing true. the jab on the podcast. Ah! You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you're whacked up the other day. You see the meme for man, you're whacked up. You're gonna have black Twitter on your back about you pushing the jab. A man, a man got whacked up the other day. A man, they put up a meme saying. There's a man's ancestors <laughs> fucking him up for trying to promote the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Is that what they said? About Joshua. <laughs> Is that what they said? I knew it was that. Is that what they said? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That you are the internet's the coldest thing in the world. Right, we're done. We're out of here, man. Hey, big up Crave. Hey, listen, no, nah. This is the bro, man. Yeah, when he's fighting, we're gonna make you like, no, go buy some tickets, pick him up, he's from the ends and he's doing his thing. Get behind him, like how you get behind everybody else, all them Nicki Minaj's and all of them. Get behind Craig. Yeah? Like, share, sub go on. Keep following the pod, keep supporting, and keep pushing out the real ones. Big like, Craig. share, subscribe, tell your grandma to tell her best friends in the <laughs> church. Come Later. On.